Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use uh, Truffle to kind of interact with your smart contracts that you've already deployed to a public blockchain um, and how to do some cool things uh, inside of Truffle with your deployed contracts. So uh, I did a video just before this about how you can uh, deploy a smart contract to a public blockchain with Truffle with the Truffle HD wallet provider. So be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. Um, and it's not necessary for you to watch this if you've used the HD Wallet Provider before. Um, you'll kind of understand what's happening already. Um, and you can just follow along with this video. But if not, just check out that previous video. Um, so yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel and see the next videos where I kind of talk about these types of things. Um, and yeah, also be sure to watch to the end of this video because I'm going to show you a pretty cool time-saving trick that I'm going to save for the end. And it actually builds on the other knowledge in this video i'm not just you know dragging you along uh it'll be worth your wait so yeah let's get started so in the last video you know we deployed a smart contract uh this simple storage contract uh to the blockchain this is basically just a simple uh storage contract where we can get a value and set a value and it's just stored in this state variable here and um, you know we configured uh, this Truffle HD wallet provider to uh, use a mnemonic phrase that we stored in our .env file um, that's going to basically give us an account where we can you know, sign messages and sign actions locally uh, in order to keep our private keys on our machine and use Infura uh, as a remote node so that we don't have to run an Ethereum node ourselves in order to deploy our smart contracts to the blockchain. So we're going to be using Infura to give us a connection to the Robston test network. And, um, you know, we've deployed a smart contract with this account and we're going to interact with that storage account. Sorry, that storage contract to like read and write the storage values. So let's see here. First thing we'll do is we'll open the Robston, we'll open the Truffle console uh, with the Robston test network. So you might have seen me use like, you know, Truffle console before um, where I use this development environment. So, you know, we've got you know, Ganache CLI running. This is, you know, development blockchain. And we can open the Truffle console that way. Um, and this will basically just open, you know, Ganache open the console connected to Ganache and we could, you know, interact with everything that's local. But if we want to connect to Robston uh, with this connection that we specify, we just pass it the flag uh, network Robston. All right. And yeah, now we're connected to the Robston test network. So what we can do is um, actually get a deployed instance well actually first let's just check out the account so uh, this is uh something you need to keep in mind um we want to see you know what account um we have with this hd wallet provider and this is kind of a bit of a gotcha with this particular hd wallet provider if you try to do this if you normally like with the travel console you'd say web 3eth accounts right so it's going to give me an error when i type this it's going to say that um this Web3 provider engine does not support synchronous requests. So normally this was like a, a quick utility that you could use inside the development environment to like see your accounts and you could just get the first one out of the list. This would basically just give you a synchronous uh, action, but it won't allow you to do that. You have to do this uh, asynchronously. So uh, I'll do that like this. I'll say, um, I'll basically say uh, web three, .eth. You have to use get accounts in the Web3 library. And uh, I've got a series on Web3 that kind of talks about these functions more in depth. If you want to look at that, you can check that out on my channel. So, so you pass it two arguments to this callback function. it will be an error and uh, their actual response. And um, I'll say console log response. All right. So these are, this is our address here. Just copy this. We'll say const address. Oops. So yeah, this is the address that's created by our Truffle HD wallet. So that's how you get access to it inside this uh, uh, console environment. So it's kind of a gotcha I just wanted to make you aware of, because if you try to do web3.eth.accounts, it's going to blow up on you. 
Um, so now that's how you uh, get access to the account provided by the provider. Um, so also it's important to you know mention inside our Truffle console, you know Truffle sets a lot of defaults for us uh, that we can you know specify. We can override those defaults to this configuration, right? Like um, we specify the provider here, we specify the gas price, we specify the network ID. You could specify like the default account inside here. Um, but by default, Truffle is going to use this uh, first account in the list from the HD provider. So uh, I just wanted you to know that's how you can find out what account this is generated by this seed phrase um, without having to like, instantiate this wallet provider. If you just want to use Web3, that's how you look it up. And since you know, Truffle uses that by default, this is the account it's going to use to like, you know, automatically sign um, actions to the blockchain. And I'll show you that here in a moment. But first, let's just go ahead and get a you know deployed instance of the contract on the Robson test network. And you know, if you look uh, in our migrations, we've basically got access to a simple storage constant here. And we say simple storage dot deployed. And we say then give it a callback function. Uh, this would be the instance. We'll say uh, contract I. All right. And we can inspect its address. I'm oh, sorry, it's address. What's it say here? Oh, I. Sorry. Uh, contract. All right. So this is actually the address of the contract on the Robson test network. And now let's actually try to, uh, you know, read the value of this. Um, storage so remember we can set the value we can get the value um, so it should be nothing right now tracked get say then uh, function console log val all right so it's nothing um, so now let's try to set it and we'll say uh, my val Let's say then you can log the receipt. All right. This will probably take a second because it's actually writing a transaction to the blockchain. And so this is what I was saying a minute ago. Like, in order to provide some metadata to this function, like normally we'd have to say you know, specify you know, from and the gas price and all that kind of stuff. But Truffle sets those values uh, by default underneath the hood. So this is successful, and I'll go over that in a second, but let me just like, explain like what I'm talking about. Um, so normally, you know, you could, this is the single, you know, argument that we would pass into the set function for Truffle contract, but you, know, you can pass uh, metadata to say like from, right, who the account's coming from, and... Um, you know, like uh, gas price and like, uh, or gas limit and gas price, right? You can specify all that kind of stuff, but that's what you're getting for free inside your Truffle JS file. And also, you know, if you're doing, if you're specifying which account it comes from, um, it still has to be able to sign. It has to have, like, you know, this environment has to have access to that account in order to sign messages. And that's exactly what your HD wallet provider is doing for you underneath the hood. Okay, so... Um, this contract that set was successful and you can see the transaction receipt here. Um, yeah, uh, you can see the block hash, all that kind of stuff. We can, you know, uh, copy this transaction receipt and look on Etherscan. Um, let's see here. Pull this down, say robston.etherscan.io and we can search for the transaction hash. All right, it's successful. And now we can say uh, contract not get and my value. All right. So now we have successfully read and write values from our smart contract um, on a public blockchain, which is pretty cool. All right. So the next thing I want to show you while we're here, and this is what I was kind of mentioning at the beginning, you want to watch the end of the video to see this, is, you know, if you have... Um, 
you know, smart contract that's deployed to a public blockchain that you want to read data from a lot uh, in your local Truffle project or just do anything with, really, um, and you want to do it over and over again without having to boot the Truffle console, uh, you can actually write a script with Truffle to interact with your deployed contracts, and that's what I'm about to show you. So, you know, it shows you how to interact with contracts on the, a public blockchain with the Truffle console. Now I'm going to show you how you can use your Truffle project to... Uh, yeah, just you know, run scripts with your contracts. So I'll just uh, exit here, clear this, and what I'm going to do is create a new file, and we'll just call it storage. You can name this anything you want to, really. Um, but this is basically just going to be a JavaScript uh, file. It's going to be a script file where we're going to uh, create an action that's going to get run by Truffle so that we can actually uh, interact with the contract. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is import uh, the storage artifact. Say simple storage. And it's going to be artifacts acquire. And we'll pass it uh, simple storage. That's all. All right. And we'll say we'll get this. We're just, basically, we're just going to write a script that gets that value that we just logged in the console. Um, you know, this value right here, and it just prints it out to us. So, like, let's say this. Let's say this is value is changing all the time, or maybe you had like a registry contract or something like that, where you wanted to read some data a lot. Um, this would just allow you to fetch it. So we'll say get storage value. And what we'll do is we'll create a, an export, you know, AMD module style, uh, or common JS, I guess, actually, sorry. Or it's uh, function. And we'll say, inside here we want to use uh, the async await pattern. And, and if you're not familiar with that, basically it allows you to uh, define an asynchronous function in JavaScript. Um, and Basically, it's going to allow us to write some await statements that uh, basically handle uh, the eventual result of a promise or, you know, an asynchronous action um, and, you know, read the values that I haven't used, like promise chains and callbacks and stuff like that. So I'll show you what that looks like. Get the storage value. And I'll say const contract and we'll say await. Uh, simple storage uh, deployed. So we did console a minute ago. Now we can't do this in the console uh, the way I did a minute ago because we're not wrapping this in an async function, which is required to use the wait keyword. Um, and I say const value equals await, and then we'll say contract, right? Contract um, get, and that's just going to be you know the function that we just called. And I'm going to just console log uh, the value. Oops. All right. So basically, um, this is just our function. Th essentially, this is our script. Like, this is the function that's going to get called. We're going to get a deployed instance of this contract, which is asynchronous, and so we have to wait in order for that to happen. That's going to be our contract uh, abstraction. And then we, uh, sorry, syntax error. Um, we're going to. Uh, use that abstraction and call the get function to get the value. We're going to log it out. So now, in order to you know, we define this function inside this uh, export, now we actually want to call it. So we'll just say get storage value. All right. All right, let's save that and we'll go back to our terminal. Oops. And what's really nice is Truffle allows you to run script files like this. Uh, with the Truffle, I believe it's Truffle exec, uh, and you just pass it the file name. So storage.js. Now, what's also really nice is just like these other Truffle commands, you can specify the environment that you want this to execute in, or specifically the network. So I can pass dash dash network rinkeby. So I can run this script on our development ne network our the main network, or sorry, Robston. Uh, Robston test network, whatever you've defined inside your Truffle.js file, that's an environment you can run this script in. All right, so let's give it a whirl and see if it worked. All right, there you go. 
it has actually logged the value uh, of the smart contract from the Robson test network. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to try to commit some of this stuff and put it up on my GitHub uh, organization so that you can uh, get this code yourself. I'll try to put a link down in the description below. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Just leave a comment down in the comment section if there's anything that I didn't cover that you want to see. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. Mm -hmm.